Being asexual, strangers in a world of eroticism. Welcome to the Priceless Podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to today's episode of the Priceless Podcast with me, a new guest. And today, today's topic is about misconceptions we have about asexuality, but we're also going to talk about other topics that we can connect or don't have to connect to asexuality, but my guest will talk a little bit more about that. So I'm saying hello to my guest that we will call uh, Gaz. So Gaz, welcome to the Priceless Podcast. How are you doing? Hello, my, uh, Michael. Um, nice to be here. Thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm doing good. So we have finally some sun. Um, we had a lot of fog the, the past weeks and, and uh, I've been enjoying um, some rays of sun and some warmth here. So one thing I didn't mention is that you are from Switzerland and you're actually the first Swiss person on this podcast. So congratulations on being oh, really? the first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what an accomplishment. Uh, well, not what really. What an accomplishment. But <laughs> <laughs> not really, but well... Um, can you tell us a little bit about your identity uh, and how you identify? Sure. So um, I'm a white cis woman. I'm uh, 32 years old. I'm um, asexual and aromantic. And um, I'm uh, also Mennonite. And I work as a design researcher. We are talking about asexuality to today, so can you tell our uh, listeners and viewers not only about asexuality, but you also mentioned aromanticism, so can you tell them and us what it means? Sure, so I would say the individual meaning um, for, uh, for, for every asexual and or or romantic, um, aromantic uh, person uh, can vary. Um, but I usually um, refer to the, um, to the uh, definition that Avon uh, uses. Avon is um, the asexuality visibility or asexual um, visibility network. And um, they, they, they define, and it's basically a definition that the community came up with. Um, the international community came up with, which uh, defines asexuality as um, having little to no um, having little to no sexual attraction to other people. And um, similar to the definition um, that I use for uh, a romanticism is having little to no romantic. Um, attraction, feeling little to no um, romantic attraction to other people. So how uh, was the process of finding out that you are asexual and aromantic? How was this process for you? Well, um, <laughs> so um, as far as I can remember, I... I never had really an interest in, um, in 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 having a partnership in a way. So um, even like I I remember um, when I was uh, still very little, I found out that I don't have to marry. So for me, that was really a relief because um, mm. like just knowing that you don't have to do that and you don't have to be in a relationship uh, was, was something very important. And basically from that time on, I um, always said that I, um, I didn't want that. Um, however, like um, when you come uh, into school and you you feel like there's quite a lot of of, um, of pressure and also the the images that you get from media and also like the the kind of role models that I had in in my family 
all of them or most of them um, uh, lived in a partnership, had kids. Um, so, uh, and and if you if you communicate that that you are um, that you don't plan or don't want to have. Um, uh, uh, like um, uh, uh, a partnership uh, and you might even say that you don't want to have sex if you talk to people they would always um, or pe most people would would react in a way like um, well but you can't know um, you will grow up and then it will feel very differently and um, yeah w maybe you need to find the right person um, things like that so um Especially when I when I uh, came into my teens, um, I just felt like there's a, a huge gap developing uh, between like what I experienced at, and uh, like the kind of feelings that my friends um, described and and the things that they were interested in. So um, I I, um, I never had uh, a boy or a girlfriend. Um, in, in, in this time, and when I was 16, a, a friend of mine, 16 or 17, a friend of mine mentioned the term asexuality towards me. And um, this was in a context where asexuality was more uh, um, like seen as a, a, as a, a psychological disorder or maybe a, a, a sort of an illness, something that's not, not right in your, uh, with your body. And um, thus, I struggled quite a bit to to really accept the term for myself. Um, it, however, it was it was um, I was happy to hear that there's a name for it, and that other people are like me because I I, I had never met someone like that, and just to know ah oh, there's a there's a, ca a category for that or there's a term to describe what I experienced was very important. Um, it, it took me until I was maybe 25 or so um, that I really accepted the term for myself. I, I started to, to visit um, uh, the um, Avon forum and just read. I never like made an account or something like that. And I struggled. I still struggled with the term asexuality because I found it very um, diffi very difficult to. Uh, to, to use the term because for me it wasn't clear what sexuality exactly meant so it was something mm. that I didn't experience in a way um, and like to to say to to talk of as asexuality or identify with the term didn't really work because it felt like uh, something that someone from outside would ascribe to me and um, it was only when I was uh, 30 that I really started to engage with the asexual uh, community um, in uh, the uh, like the uh, English speech uh, speaking and also the German uh, speaking and the Swiss says community that I um, started to to feel more comfortable um, with the term and especially I I, um, I sort of uh, found the term ace uh, which is often used as a shortening of, of the term asexuality to to identify myself with because it's also a term that's coming out of of um, the ace community or the ace back uh, community and um, basically uh, the the aero uh, aromanticism uh, the that identification came from just reading about asexuality so um, it was um, usually in the asexual um, uh, in asexual community uh, there is a distinction between uh, different um, forms of attractions, different forms of how people experience attra attraction to, to, and orientation towards, um, different people. Um, so, um, the, basically the, the distinction between, uh, aromanticism and asexuality came from the develop, from, from discussions in the community because there were people who, did not feel sexual attracted, uh, sexually attracted to other people, but they felt romantically attracted to other people. So they could say, I don't want to have sex with them, but I really, uh, I, I still fall in, in love with people. And there were other people who said, 
um, I, I don't really fall in love with people, but I um, still enjoy sexual interaction or a sexual uh, relationship to people. And uh, the, uh, from that, uh, this, this kind of split of, of um, orientations uh, that, that uh, the ACE community sort of um, uh, propagates, which is often called the split attraction model, um, th that developed. And uh, so when you dive into the asexual uh, community, you very fast uh, come upon the, uh, the term aromanticism. And that's also uh, something that, that um, for me, very, like, as soon as I read about it, it was pretty much clear that that um, described my experience. Um, I said before split attraction model, um, there are other other um, kinds of orientations or, or ways of attracting that, that people um, uh, uh, discern. So there's, for example, there's um, sensual attraction, which um, sort of defines how people feel attract, like how, whom and and how people experience the, uh, a longing for for uh, like sensual contact, which is usually. Um, uh, defined as like hugging or uh, touching each other and there's a uh, uh, platonic orientation and many others um, that have their spe uh, specific meaning this is a, this is uh, more a discussion within the the asexual community that um, where people try to to describe their their um, their individual experience, so th those uh, sublabels, and within the ace back, uh, uh, within the ace um, community and the ace uh, ace spectrum, um, there's also like sort of a linear um, this uh, um, sort of a linear way of of identifying. So there, uh, the term asexual usually within the community is used for people who really do feel little to know. And then there's a, a, a term called gray asexual. That's for people who don't really know. Maybe they um, they experience sometimes uh, sexual attraction, but uh, very very um, but not often. Or depending on a certain context, there are uh, demisexual um, people who are identifying as demisexual. That's a term to describe when people only feel sexual attraction towards people. They they have a, a strong um, attachment or a strong um, uh, bond to, and there's also um, uh, the term questioning uh, that uh, uh, um, or that people use who who think about like or who who feel like they can't really um, uh, put themselves on one of these uh, terms, and there are also a few other uh, definitions, but the the four I mentioned are like the biggest ones. And within the asexual community, um, the, the asexual people who de define themselves as asexual um, are like the biggest part. The one question I have is about the tension you were you were mm -hmm. mentioning that there are so many people on the spectrum. Do you experience any tension within the community of people you know if if they say i'm as asexual but still have occasional sexual experiences or aromantic and then you know because you talked about the spectrum so is there any tension because some people feel oh you're just threatening my identity as being true asexual or aromantic um, from from what I learned or from what I heard, um, there used to be quite a bit of tension on that topic. Um, I mean, the 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 ACE community is not very like it is very young still. Um, it it formed around the the uh, uh, year th two thousand. Um, it started in the nineties with with uh, email. Um, uh, email sort of newsletter or email groups that um, that uh, exchanged amongst each other uh, or t um, had discussions and then it, um, Avon um, was uh, later uh, founded and um, especially in the beginning that was a very big discussion about who is really ace who is a real ace um, and 
uh, in the past years, there uh, the community has much more uh, evolved uh, to really include these different different experiences, um, and also like uh, usually people who have um, like frequent like not frequently but who have um, sexual uh, experiences or. Uh, also people like or who, people who uh, do experience um sexual attraction they would usually claim um terms like gray asexual or mm. um or demi uh, demisexual so there there are uh, labels also that people can use to to uh, describe them themselves but um to to really define the kind of asexual they are um and th- very important the term asexual does not speak really about do you have sexual interaction so it's really about the attraction and the 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 arousal and it also doesn't really mean that um you never like that the the libido is zero there are many um uh, aces who do say that uh, they never uh, feel um, uh, sexually um aroused or or um yeah um, but there's still very valid aces who sometimes do ha- feel maybe a, a low or a higher uh, uh, libido, and um, so the experience varies. And uh, today the the discussion is much is much less. And um, ace and also being asexual because or being on the asexual spectrum uh, has become much more of an umbrella term. Still, there are uh, people. Um, and I think that's also a very valid point that um, they say it's it's important to use uh, the term asexual for people who uh, really do feel um, just very little to no um, uh, sexual attraction. And there mm-hmm. is still uh, some tension sometimes, but in general, um, the, the 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 community has mostly agreed to that it is okay. Um, for people to identify this way and uh, people shouldn't uh, tell each other what kind of identification um, is valid or not valid. Mm. You said that it took till you were 25 to figure out um, or even to 31 to come to terms with this with this term, <laughs> with this name, and I can connect very well with what you are saying because, you know, your the the name for as- asexuality comes in comparison to people who are uh, sexual. So it's kind of like I'm not them, <laughs> <laughs> um, which which is always a sad way to define something or to use a word, uh, which is let's say more like negative then it's not affirming exactly um uh, so is it is it first of all is it better to call uh people uh like or ask people are you ace is it better to use this for in general or this is just something that you prefer um i think that varies a lot within the community so i would uh, suggest that you just um like use the terms that people use um, for to describe themselves so uh yeah just 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 recently uh we had a discussion there are certain um tendencies towards really using the also ace to to talk of the ace spectrum um but yeah it it uh, it depends on how people identify i would say so in other words just ask <laughs> <laughs> and ask and the, listen yeah <laughs> yeah exactly the, i think that's always important to see as as you were saying it's a whole spectrum and i think it's so important just to ask the individual experiences and listen to the people because it's just so different experiences are very different in how people identify and asexuality for some person means something else than for other people so uh, ask and listen dear viewers and listeners mm-hmm. um, back to your story I just wanted to ask how did it feel for you when you said you needed t- to accept yourself you needed this time up to your 25th year of your life 
how how did it feel for you being surrounded by all these people who get into relationships and we all know there is still a huge pressure in everywhere i mean at, at least in my country wherever someone comes who is not married or doesn't have an obvious girlfriend or boyfriend everyone is asking do you have someone when will you have one someone well when you when will you get married so how did that feel for you um i mean i always fe felt like a stranger in many ways that was not the only like that was just one of the many ways in which i was different right so mm. um also being mennonite is mennonites are a um, religious minority in switzerland and uh, Switzerland is also in many ways quite uh, secular so it's like when you're religious um, in a way um, you you you're often in many contexts you're not taken very seriously um, and uh, the Mennonites in Switzerland have a, and in, in, in Europe have a history of uh, persecution so in many ways i was i grew up with um with a history of being persecuted because you were because we were different um and i mean this persecution stopped 300 years ago but still there um is so much awareness of that and also of the possibility of of uh, of um persecution that I feel like that that had a, a huge impact on me, and um, like the sexual orientation that I have was was sort of something that um, was was one of the the aspects in, in which I was different, um, and it didn't feel safe to be visible um, uh, on the outside as different in this way, and it, on the other hand, I. Um, I had learned to be different and to not be like part of the in group in many ways. Um, and also to not care so much about like the pressure that they put in you because it was very clear that I was that, 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 uh, sort of I, I was not able to, to, um, accommodate these, um, these norms in, in, yeah. Um, so because i was different in, uh, because i was so many in so many ways different it was very clear um that this pressure was not so much a pressure upon me um i would say so it, it wasn't so much the peer pressure that i felt to to um to uh, engage in relationships um which is very different when i listen to other uh, people from the aspec community that's often something that they um, try out and make very bad experiences. Some make good experiences. Um, mm. But uh, I would say, like, from what I hear, there are many uh, people who make bad experience with trying to, trying to, 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 to lean into this pressure and, and to, to figure out um, that they don't like it. Um, so for me, it wasn't that much uh, this kind of pressure, but it was, like the fear of, um, in a way, an irrational fear of, of, of persecution. Mm -hmm. And um, also, it, it didn't help that in media and also in many um, other, uh, like what people say and what, what uh, is discussed in, in, um, uh, in presentations and stuff, like... Uh, romantic love, having sex, ha being in a partnership, that's very much seen as the norm and something that makes humans as humans. So um, being denied this this uh, humanity is something that, that um, was and is uh, very hurtful every time mm. that, it, that it happens. Mm. When you look at your faith, how... Is that for you being asexual and aromantic? Do you see any pressure or problems with your church, but also with your own 
connection to God and faith, um, what does it do for you? I would say, like, so the, the, um, I'm from I'm I'm from a Mennonite family, um, but since there wasn't a Mennonite community uh, or a Mennonite church where we lived, we would go to uh, the Meth Methodist uh, church here, um, and so I can I can mostly talk about this experience. Um, in many ways, asexuality is invisible. Um, in the way that um, there's not there's not a, a paragraph in in uh, within the Bible that says that um, that um, people who do not engage in, in in sexual activities should be persecuted or or found out. Um, the way uh, like. Uh, it is for for other uh, sexual orientations um so when i was young basically the main message was um these um like if you have sexual thoughts that's maybe uh like bad or you need to resist those passions and i always thought well i'm a, a, um, a, a super christian because i don't have any of these thoughts so i'm really acing that um and uh for me also the, the 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 idea of not having sex before marriage was a really easy way out because like i i i, uh, I was for a while a very firm believer in like that that's the right way for me because then if i don't um, marry i yeah. don't have to go to sex sexually interact with people um on the other hand, um, when 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 I uh, was over twenty, I started to feel pressure towards um, mm. like the the like the usual way the the ways that um, uh, yeah the the also the the role of a woman um, as as a mother and a, a partner, um, which is which I would say is is very like. There are exceptions within the Bible of, of uh, women who do differently, but in general, I would say the the majority is uh, is much more yeah. in this very uh, constricted um, role model of of women. Yeah. Um, and of course, in in Catholic and uh, also in in Protestant uh, denominations, we have sort of ways. Like if you go into, uh, if you become a nun, for example, there is the idea of the of the celibate, which is which I would clearly like distinct from being asexual, uh, because one yeah. is that uh, is sort of uh, not doing something, um, and I would say that one is a choice and the other isn't. Is, and exactly, and and but it is sort of a way in which you can conceal. Uh, your um, asexuality and and uh, and there is sort of a path uh, foreseen uh, or like a, a path uh, uh, lined up for you as as a asexual person living in a, in 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 community also. Um, but I mean, there are um, uh, uh, places in in the Bible where it's clearly said that um, sort of the job of 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 human beings is to procreate that's a difficult uh, um it's difficult part or difficult uh, uh, statement in my view also um like the need to being partnered or anything that like everything that that um speaks about the like a supporting the role of of women so I would say, as as uh, um, a woman, I feel also many ways of pressure uh, uh, when it comes to to mm. uh, the Christian religion. Mm. Um, the the way that I was raised uh, in my family, we had I would say I I learned a very um, liberal in many ways. Uh, um, interpretation of uh, the Bible and also one that was and and I, that's really something that I appreciate appreciate about my parents that they uh, 
they did very well in in strengthening me that it was okay to be the way that I am and that they, mm. that they put never pressure on me uh, in this uh, regard but of course I have aunts and uncles who when we meet will ask here, um, is there somebody or like <laughs> um or like something like are oh, there you will have kids uh, in a few years and I, I really look forward to when I'm, I don't know, 45 or so, when, when people start <laughs> believing me that that won't be the case. But uh, yeah. 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 So it's an ongoing story, never ending story. Like the questions go on and on. Well, I hope for you that it will really happen this way, you know, that they will leave you alone, <laughs> let you be. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, something, something that I find r really difficult is then like the pity some people mm. have mm. like being pitied for the the life that you choose yeah. yeah 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 like how can you have joy in your life if you don't have a partner yeah. i'm thinking about how could i engage more people into supporting the podcast and some people said just be more relaxed <laughs> think that this will make a difference so if you want to support this podcast just click one of the links below you can support us through a wire transfer or you can click the link for patreon and become a monthly supporter so tell the people how can you have joy in your life when you don't mm -hmm. have a partner yeah. how is that mm -hmm. <laughs> well you know i have i have a, a big family i have friends um, and i really enjoy sometimes just time with uh, by myself and with myself um yeah yeah and, yeah. yeah there are so many things i people i think people forget that there are so many things that we can enjoy uh when we don't have a partner and don't have a need for a partner and i think it's so hard for people who aren't you know aces or a romantic you know that they can't even imagine how is that when you don't long for a partner and then they think oh that would be so sad <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so they actually you know that's probably when people you know are so sad because they don't have anyone and really want someone that they yep. connect this to people who actually don't have a need for a partner <laughs> so there is this misconception of people who actually are asexual or aromantic or, uh, you know, you said ace with, with a speck. What about connection? How is that, you know, some people have this misconception that people don't have a need, that these people don't have a need for, or that you don't have a need for other people, and that you are this weird people. Uh, I, I heard one person who was, uh, who is asexual and aromantic, and she said, people think that I am like, uh, from this series, I don't know if you saw that, the Big Bang Theory, like uh, Sheldon. Sheldon. Uh, mm. yeah, 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 that I am Sheldon, you know, this who is really awkward around people and don't know what to do with people. Uh, so how would you debunk uh, this misconception uh, of the need for connection? I know it's all also a spectrum as much as I know. Mm. Yeah. So as you meant, uh, as you said, it, it is a spectrum, and and people who are um, asexual and people who are aromantic are very different in in like very a lot in the way that um, also the amount of connection that they need. Um, generally, I would say um, the majority of people that I meet um, in uh, asexual communities they do. Um, they, they they do have connections and many of them also have very strong connections to other people um there are asexual people who like i mentioned before who who go who 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 want to have a, a romantic relationship um there are aromantic people who have uh 
like uh, who have uh, sexual relationships and there are many other ways of of uh, of, of uh, relating to people so when i describe the relationships that i have i would say that for me the the relationships that i have towards people feel like the the close relationships the close attachment that i have to to people um is i can't really say there's a difference between um like f- the feeling that i have towards people of my family so uh, my 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 parents my 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 siblings and to friends so friends to me often feel like um like siblings in many ways um mm. and from what i hear listening to people who are romantic uh, or who are uh, sexual so we use the term allosexual or alloromantic to 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 um to talk about people who um, who do feel sexual attraction or who do feel um, romantic attraction. And um, if I talk to them, they say that they feel a difference in what they feel towards um, people they are sexually attraction, uh, attracted to and that they feel a difference uh, towards people who uh, they are romantically attracted to. Um, and like I just don't have an experience of feeling this difference. I can say like it feels close like a sibling, it feels close like a parent, it feels close like a cousin. Like uh, mm. th- so, there's this sort of uh, variation, which is just a variation of closeness. But there's not, from in my experience, uh, there is not this um, like being like having this spe- this special person. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, what's that? Yeah, that's that's actually the answer mm-hmm. to what I was asking. Yeah, thank you so much uh, because I was talking about you know that people think that you are this yeah. weird people but who don't something... connect to yeah. anyone. So maybe something to, to that. Um, I would also very much say it is okay if people don't like if people experience. Um, their life as don't like that they don't need uh, people or that or it is also perfectly okay uh, if people like are o- awkward towards uh, other mm. people um, and within the asexual community we have a lot of people who are on the um, uh, autism spectrum mm. so um uh, I don't know exactly the, the uh, it, just recently the um, ACE community uh, report was released and um, I'm going to quickly check the numbers, but there's a really uh, a, a big, like a, a big community within the ACE community who is ACE and also um, is on the autism, autism spectrum. Um, and some of them really do struggle with with uh, uh, being in contact with people. Mm. Mm. Um, that does not mean that they are less valid as being asexual uh, when uh, they are on the the uh, um, autism spectrum. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's yeah. maybe also an as- aspect which um, which contributes to why. Like why we have this stereotype. Um, if you look at stereotypes in general about asexual people, I mean, there's um, many characters from, um, like from 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 uh, movies and series that, like within the ace community, it is discussed: are they asexual? And sometimes they are they are claimed as um, being asexual. Um, and if you look, we look at what kind of of of, um, of characters they are. Many of them are robots. Many mm. of them are aliens. Many of them are not human. Mm. And if you think of someone like Sheldon, who who like they often the storyline goes that um, first they 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 like um, they talk in many ways uh, similar to to how um, an asexual person. Um, would would talk, and within the storyline, it often is the narrative that they are cured, like they meet someone special. Mm. That um, mm. and and uh, yeah, this also doesn't really help to um, yeah. to to lower the expectations and also to to really um, 
make it uh, to a, like make it commonly accepted that like being able to to um, that that sexual freedom doesn't only mean that I can choose who I want to have sex with, but it also means that we that I can choose not to have sex. Yeah, yeah. And and to that maybe to add to that, um, it's very interesting that different bodies are um, are sexualized more or less. So, mm. um, for example, um, uh, uh, people with a disabled body. Um, disabled people they are often they, uh, they are often desexualized and mm. um so there within um disability activism there has been like this strive to 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 say but we do have sex mm. um and still there are disabled people who are asexual and as, mm. if asexual the asexual com community says yes but we are not disabled um, there's like there is no space for these uh, kind of people, for, for like for people who have who are within this intersection, and mm. um, it it also like plays with gender roles. So um, uh, femininity is in society differently, like uh, female bodies are differently sexualized in in uh, different um, uh, in different societies. Um, male bodies are more or less uh, um, sexualized, and also the expectations. Um, that that you have towards what what it, what does it mean to be a real woman? What does it mean to be a real man? What does it mean to to be somewhere in between? And and what what in betweens are allowed or accepted? And there's also an as aspect of of race. So often uh, um, yeah. uh, black and people of color, uh, but, uh, black people and people of color um, uh, are more sexualized. Like yeah. uh, f f from f from the white um, uh, perspective um, uh, within our societies, and uh, that leads to the experience that that um, uh, uh, black ace activists uh, um, sometimes uh, uh, talk about like not be being believed because they mm. are black because they mm. are. Um, uh, their bodies are in this way sexualized, and that's also true, especially for men who are like who 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 would say like people don't believe them. I mean, it's something that I, as a woman, as well, experience. But um, uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting to to see how much gender is is um, bound to these ideas of uh, yeah. of sexuality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I uh, suppose that there is also a difference between, you know, just white men and white women, men and women, yeah. Uh, yeah. because men are so often, you know, women are again desexualized very often and men yeah. hypersexualized, like they're very sexual and they want to want sex all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I'm so excited just listening to you. You know, I see how much we still have to evolve as a community, as human beings. And I'm so excited that we're talking about this uh, in this podcast and that we are creating a space where we talk about topics like this. Um, so what are some other i mean you already talked now about these misconceptions um we talked about the misconception of you know there is no need for connection for everyone who is asexual or aromantic uh, are there any other misconceptions that you experience and that you would like to mention here and maybe you know say something uh in return to mm -hmm. them so one aspect is is really like the the preconception that there's something wrong with people who are mm. not um, uh, who are not attracted sexually to other people. Um, this has also like uh, when when you look at the 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 history of of the, the medical history of the term asexuality, um, asexuality used for a long time to just be uh, an illness. Um, and it um, it has become like the definition now has changed towards um, uh, not being um, n not having not feeling sexual attraction or, or um, uh, uh, sexual arousal um, in 
and with with the combination that there is a suffering but if there's no mm. suffering um from just the lack of of um of uh, sexual attraction or sexual um activity um there is no problem people who are asexual they are not ill and they can be ill there there can be um people who are ill yeah. and but yeah, it, it yeah. is not like it is not coupled in, like in this way um and the, the, especially for for uh, people in the health sector i think it's very important uh, when you talk about um uh, uh primary care physicians when you talk about um uh, uh, uh gynecologists Mm -hmm. And when we talk about uh, psychologists and uh, 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 in psychiatry, therapists, that's really yeah. really important. People don't have to be cured um, if they are not suffering from being uh, for, like because they are sexual. Um, yeah. And it is also very difficult to figure out like the kind of um, gynecology is um, something we don't really often talk about. Um, and when we talk about it, it is very closely related to being sexually active. And um, to figure, for me, it, it, it took me very long to figure out that I myself have to go to the gynecologist. Because mm -hmm. usually what I heard is you have to go when you're sexually active. But mm -hmm. what when you're not sexually active? So, um, like having access to 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 um, to these uh, uh, medical um, services is also something that that uh, is very important, um, and it's very or it was very helpful to me to to get in contact with the um, ACE community um, and also the ERA community to really. Um, yeah, to 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 figure out with others what what, what do we need and and um, yeah. like because they have similar experiences as I have. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about all the misconceptions. So we we indeed are human beings. I think that's really important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here, here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. A misconception or other misconceptions like um there is are just like that that there's one asexual experience or one um aromantic experience and that's not the case it's really really interesting mm -hmm. or i think it's it's also very interesting for people who are not themselves asexual but but um like from from um everywhere in the uh, queer community that um like the 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 kind of discussions that we have on trying to discern exactly what kind of of attractions that people feel and um the, the way like it is uh, we talk the the community talks about love relationships sex or any core, any way of of um uh, sexual or romantic interaction um so there, there, there are many, like many, there's a big um, scale of, of, or a big spectrum um, of, of what people experience there. And maybe another one is like that um, um, people who are ace or aromantic are not part of the queer community. Um, that's something that... Uh, uh, that is sort of repeated again and again, and um, also the misconceptions that um, asexual people are not suffering from discrimination. Um, mm. There mm. is uh, um, there is uh, discrimination and uh, uh, experience of discrimination uh, f uh, towards people on the ace and the uh, aero community mm. Mm. having a as part of the lgbti plus is it do you think it's something that harmed you more like the whole community or helped you um i think it's very for me for me personally i find it very important as a sign that lgbtiaq plus like has the a within it um, mm -hmm. Whenever there's a, a like 
sort of a, a like an event or something that just has LGBT or LGBTQ. But with LGBTIQ, I feel sort of like also part of it because I consider myself as queer. But with LGBT, for me, it's very like usually mm. I would ask people, is it okay if I come? Do you consider me part of your community or not? Um, and I think what we suffer much more from is that um, uh, queer community is not being open to us. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry because I know about many of those letters that are added very often. They're getting invisible and they're getting unfortunately mistreated. And some of those letter even, I think, suffered because they were part of these letters. And a lot of the times they were just ignored. Or there was even a lot of prejudice and people just forgot, you know, that we suffered, that they suffered similar prejudices. So... Or even, like, even if, like, there's similar press, for example, as... I live as uh, uh, um, like I live by myself, um, and I'm not like a stereotypical way of presenting myself as a woman in many ways. Um, people don't think of me as being asexual. People, what what I have like uh, experiences is that people would rather um, uh, uh, think that I'm um, uh, homosexual. Mm. So. I do like have people who treat me based on the stereotypes that they have towards uh, homosexual people. And then mm. I do like that's a, also a misconception. And I do get the discrimination towards me as a asexual person as well. Okay, instead of talking about the ways how society discriminates ace people, can you say? What does society need to realize and change to make life more joyful for people who are asexual, aromantic, somewhere on the spectrum? Um, I think it's very important that, that uh, uh, we talk more about asexuality because uh, not knowing about it is, um, makes it very difficult for people to figure out that they are okay. Um, and that it is okay not to want to have sex and that it is okay not to want to be in a relationship. Um, it is also okay to want that, but it's just important that people also um, learn uh, from a young age that it's um, that that's uh, a way of being as well, um, mm -hmm. which would just be, uh, give uh, ace people and aero people the opportunity to... to um, yeah, have have a much easier way towards uh, their coming out. Um, yeah. Then another aspect uh, which is concerns more uh, maybe structural or legal aspects is um, like many many of the uh, security measures that we like or security like financial security um, that we have are um, uh, are constructed towards people who marry. Um, mm. And who mm. are in a in a monogam uh, monogamous relationship, um, and I think it's very important to also um, have structures that fit people who live alone and who live alone for a long time, um, mm. and uh, maybe also, uh, I mean that would go a step further to um, make relationships possible that are not based in uh, romantic and um, uh, or, or sexual uh, love so um, have it, finding forms for queer, uh, for queer platonic relationships for uh, relationships where there may be more than two people involved um, mm. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, I mean, another example is for uh, is is like um, uh, uh, houses and and apartments. M many of most of them are made for people who uh, have who are uh, for 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 couples for families, um, and even though we're not that many. Um, that it's important that we do find places to live. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Uh, thank you. So is, is there anything I didn't ask you and you would say this is very important to mention? Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about the community. The, the ACE community, the international, so just to, to for people yes, who are listening, yes. um, who are more interested in, in this topic, um, mm. that, that they have a way of, of um, finding us. <laughs> yes, definitely. And if there is anyone who is questioning or exactly. uh, who, who thinks that they are asexual or aromantic and want to find out more, we'll definitely also put the links in the podcast description. There's uh, a big forum on asexuality, which also um, has a part uh, on uh, aromanticism. Uh, it's called Avon. Uh, I mentioned it before. Then there's mm -hmm. uh, Aerocalypse, which is uh, a forum on aromanticism. There is uh, um, every year there is uh, international asexual. Uh, um, sorry, there's an international asexuality conference, um, which uh, has also uh, lots of videos on YouTube uh, where you can see panels and people um, talking about it. There are there's uh, several podcasts on asexuality. The the most well known uh, in English are A OK, which is like it's it's somewhat similar to the Priceless podcast in the way that it people talk about their experience, their mm. uh, the way they live, and um, there's also uh, another podcast called Sounds Fake but OK. Um, then uh, it was just recently um, we had. The, the ACE week, um, last week of October, and there's also a, a AERO week coming end of February. And um, uh, currently open is the ACE community census where, um, where uh, sort of, um, it's, a, it's a yearly study on how like the community is, is built up and um, mm. asexual community uh, experiences. And um, it's also encouraged that people who are not asexual and or aromantic can uh, fill out the census because there's um, also sections that ask about uh, experiences of um, mm. allosexu uh, allosexuals and alloromantics. So if you want, uh, feel free to, to uh, fill out the, this um, survey. Yeah, um, and there's a, a really nice journal I ju just recently discovered called ACE. Um, so it's uh, written A Z E, and um, yeah, um, it it has like also imagery and poetry and um, texts from the um, ACE and Arrow community. Great. So we'll definitely add all the links to the podcast description. Um, I find it so important that people can do some more research and have something that they can grab right away while they're listening uh, yeah. to to about this topic. Uh, thank you, dear listeners, for being with us. I hope that you enjoyed this podcast as much as I did listening to Gaz and and her answers. Um, as we said, all the links will be in the podcast description. Uh, help us also spread the word about the podcast. You can help also by subscribing, by liking, by commenting. Uh, of course, we hope for nice comments and no trolling comments uh, here, uh, comments that are at least uh, respectful. And uh, yeah, this is it for today. So um, all there is left to say from my part is uh, bye everyone and bye Gaz. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.